transition over to testicular pathology because I think this is pretty appropriate just because it's so analogous to the ovaries. So uh, you can have masses in the testicle and, the other, and you can have other things that go wrong with the testicles. So we'll start with the other things. Uh, the first thing is orchidism. So background is that the testes develop in the abdomen and then they descend through the processus vaginalis into the scrotum. And a crypt orchidism is basically when this fails. So your testes have not descended into the scrotum. They're still up in the abdomen. And prematurity is a risk factor for this. I just remember, I mean, just remember that it takes time. So if you're premature, then it's more likely that it hasn't done so yet. Complications of this include impaired spermatogenesis. And that's because your sperm, they love, to, they, they don't like super hot environments. And your body, remember, is like 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty warm. So if your testes are all up in the body, then the sperm is not going to develop well. And you can also have increased risk of germ cell tumors. And that's also due to like the warm environment leading to long-term damage of your cells. So treatment is that first we wait for them to descend naturally because this descent can take up to happen up to uh, by up to four months. But if there's no descent by six months, then we need to surgically lower the testes and attach it to the scrotum as soon as possible. And that procedure is called an orchiopexy. Pexy just means attaching. Um, the next pathology is testicular torsion. You can kind of just tell by the name. It's the twisting of the spermatic cord. And that's because the testes has not has failed to attach to the inner lining of the scrotum. So it's just kind of floating there. And then it twists. And you got these blood vessels up in the spermatic cord. And so when you twist it, you basically get obstruction of the veins and you get infarction. This is not good. And presentation, if you can kind of imagine, it's going to be acute, severe pain. And uh, your testes will be high riding. That means that instead of being down here, they're going to be over here. So they're going to be a little bit higher than they normally are. If you just imagine just twisting, twisting, it's going to raise it up a little bit. And then the other thing is the absent chromasteric reflex. And what this is, is if you stroke the inner thigh, there's a reflex arc that's going to cause a crewmaster muscle in the... Uh, in the spermatic cord, it's going to pull, the cremaster muscle will pull the testes up. Um, and then, so, uh, if you have testicular torsion, this does not happen. So treatment is that you need to fix the testes to the spermatic, to the um, scrotum as soon as possible. And you're actually going to fix both of the testes um, so that you can prevent future occurrence because it's very often times that the other testes will also, also suffer testicular torsion as well. Um, and if for some reason you're out in the wilderness or something, happen to be climbing, you get some testicular torsion, uh, you can actually manually detorse the testes, that is manually twi untwist the testes. So now we can talk about some, um, some masses in the testes that are not tumors. The first one would be varicocele. And what this is, this is basically a dilation of spermatic veins. Uh, it's due to reduced drainage. So what it looks like, it looks like a bag of worms. If you look at here, when I zoom in, it's kind of like, like a wormy appearance in the testicles. It's a bag of worms. And it's usually on the left side. I'm going to explain why. So we have the inferior vena cava here. And then we have the renal veins. Renal veins. So this is the, say this is the left and this is the right. So on the left side, the testicular Testicular veins drain into the renal veins, so the renal vein, testicular vein. And on the right side, the testicular vein, testicular vein drains straight into the inferior vena cava. So you can tell that it's a lot easier for you to get an obstruction on the left side with this right vein drainage, it's more complicated drainage. And then this uh, enlargement will not transilluminate. What that means is when you're trying to light into it, it's not going to basically be see-through. And we'll see why this is important in a sec. And complications are infertility if this is untreated. That's because you get all that blood just, just kind of hanging out on the testicles. It's warm and your sperm don't develop well in warm environments. Um, so you can get infertility. So the next thing is hydrocele. This is due to failure of the processus vaginalis to obliterate. Um, remember, that's the canal that goes from that's through which the testes go from the abdomen and drop down into the scrotum. And so then, if you have this open canal here, you can get fluid from the abdomen accumulating in the scrotum. And the presentation will be an enlarged scrotum, as you can expect, with a bunch of fluid. And this fluid transilluminates with light. And this is a picture of transillumination. This is obviously not the scrotum, but you can tell when you shine a light through, it's, it's see-through. And 
Complications? None. This actually resolves spontaneously without issue. So this is usually not a big deal. Finally, the last thing that can happen is a spermatocele. This is a cystic, uh, cystic accumulation of a sperm in the epididymal duct. So if you remember, this is your testes. This is the epididymis. It's kind of like the helmet of the testes. And then remember, this is where the vas deferens goes up. Okay, so this is a cystic dilation of this epididymis. And findings is it's a palpable mass in the scrotum, but it's separate from the testes because this is the testes right here, and this is where they are epidermis, um, spermatocele, which is the mass you're going to feel. And on ultrasound, this is what you're going to see: it's that uh, cystic accumulation of sperm in the epididymal duct, and there are no complications. All right, so now we can talk about tumors. This is very similar to the ovarian cell tumor, so this is going to be a piece of cake. Um, it's similar, again, there's divided into germ cell tumors and sex core tumors. So unlike, over, and unlike the ovaries, there's no surface epithelial tumors. Uh, patients here are usually very young. They're from 15 to 40 years old. And if you see a testicular mass or tumor in an older man, uh, like older than 60 year old, years old, that's basically metastatic lymphoma until proven otherwise. Uh, other general principles is that these present as hard masses on the testicle that do not transilluminate. And you never ever biopsy a testicular mass because of risk of seeding the scrotum with tumor cells. This is like the exception to all to cancers where you almost always biopsy uh, to figure out what it is. Here you never biopsy the mass. You gotta just take out the whole testicle by a radical orchiectomy. You're gonna biopsy it. All right, so let's go into the germ cell tumors now. This we can divide further into seminoma versus non-seminoma germ cells. Seminoma germ cells have, have um, excellent prognosis. They respond very well to the meridial therapy and they metastasize late. And the other key thing is these do not produce AFP. I repeat again, they do not produce AFP. If you see elevated AFP with a testicular mass, you know this is not a seminoma. Okay, and then non-seminomas have variable response to treatment, and these metastasize early. So here's a little chart for all of this. Seminomas, we'll start with, come from the germ cells, and the tumor marker here is ALKFOS. This is the male version of dysgerminoma, and um, again, you see fried egg cells on histology. And remember, again, these do not produce AFP. Uh, teratoma here is again similar to, it's similar but this is the one that's a little different it's made from fetal tissue there's still a tumor marker and unlike for females the mature teratoma is actually malignant so yolk sac tumor uh, aka the endodermal sinus tumor exact same thing as the ovaries yolk sac um, origin this uh, produces AFP and you're going to see the Schiller Duval bodies again and uh, this is the most common testicular tumor for boys under 3 years old Corio carcinoma again, exact same thing. Um, it's placental tissue secretes beta HCG, um, composes in situ trophoblast and cytotrophoblast, but no villi. And um, because of the similarity of the HCG A alpha subunit to LH, FSH, and TSH, you can um, get symptoms of gynecomastia and hyperthyroidism. Gynecomastia would be from the the FSH, and then um, FSH similarities in the hyperthyroidism would be from the TSH similarities leading to increased thyroid hormone production. And this metastasizes to the brain and the lungs. So sex core tumors, so remember that um, sex cords can be, there's like Leydig cells, there's Sertoli cells. Remember that Leydig cell tumors, uh, Leydig cells make androgens. So these tumors will have hyperandrogenemia. This presents with precocious puberty in boys and gynecomastia in men. And on histology, you get rank crystals. Um, and then this is how they look like magnified. This is the rank crystals that you'll see in the Leydig cell tumor. Going back, so Sertoli cell tumors are actually asymptomatic. Uh, they're just made up of a bunch of tubules. And remember that Sertoli cells don't make androgens, so you're not going to see any of that. Finally, testicular tumor lymphoma, as we mentioned before, this is the most common ma cause of testicular mass in men older than 60 years old. This is a quick um, comparison of testicular and ovarian germ cell tumors just to show you how similar they are. I'm just going to highlight a couple of differences that we've already talked about. In, uh, in the males, the teratoma, uh, even the uh, mature teratoma is malignant. And then the yolk sac tumor, um, 
we see that the, this is the most common testicular tumor for boys less than three years old. And the other difference is in semenomas, which is analogous to the, this germinomas. You see elevated ALKFOS compared to the elevated LDH. Um, that's it for testicular tumors. Probably redo that.